Hey everybody, this is the Lego Batman movie, The Bat Space Shuttle Set. This is intended to be used in conjunction with the Batcave break-in set from, would you believe, over a year ago. Basically the platform just kind of lines up with that one if you want to use the two together. But this works perfectly fine just as its own thing as a space shuttle launch platform and partial uh, selector for costumes or bat suits as well. Let me get to the shuttle itself first though, since I think that's the thing that most people are going to be most interested in. Now, it is important to note that the shuttle is not really attached to the platform. It's not really docked here. In fact, you can just take all this away and pretend it never existed in the first place. It, it is uh, just literally not connected at all. No studs, no connection of any sorts. They're, they're not even touching the platform and the, the shuttle unit. Now this is set up like an American space shuttle system with the orbiter slash re-entry vehicle attached to a combination of a center large fuel tank and a couple of rocket boosters on the side. So all of that can be taken apart. I think they refer to the, the booster units plus the fuel tank as a triple booster unit, but there's no rocket exhaust on the fuel tank itself as would make sense they didn't really set this up to hold cargo in the nose but because that is such a large space that gray capsule up there if you want to you could potentially take that apart and put some cargo in there it's just not really designed to work that that way all that well and you can pull this apart uh, it's not quite as easy as I would like it to be you can see the two struts connecting between the fuel tank and the shuttle <clears throat> come on oh man feels like I'm breaking it gosh mm-hmm yeah that's not good <laughs> That is, uh, that is not good at all. This is built correctly. You have a couple of supposedly low friction slash no friction joints there. They just snap into place and they're supposed to be easy to pop out, but they push together firmly when they come apart. Oh man. Gah. Yeah, that's not cool. So, yeah, this is this. And you can also pull the, the rockets off leave that behind do something like that that works each of these rockets just has a single sticker on there and I love the fact that there is an arrow that says arrow there's one of those going in either direction on either sticker so now my fingers hurt just a little bit from taking that apart but we are left with the space shuttle itself this does not have any landing gear to extend so it's just going to be flat on the ground which is is fine by me i mean it sits just fine it's actually not completely on the ground it sits up just a bit you know its wings are elevated this has the ability to actually shoot because there are two stud shooters on either wing plus a bunch of kind of simulated cannon things you kind of a simulated cannon there these could be seen as blasters but you know you just get the two actual fireable stud shooters major major large central booster here engine and then a couple on the sides that could be used just as as thrusters for maneuvering or they could be atmospheric you know re-entry flight section engines that aren't used all the time but i like the shaping of this around the back you know changing it up a little bit from the the real life designs of these things that's cool of course it has a cargo section and that can be opened up just get the eight wide door segment there and it carries with it the bat moon buggy so this is just a kind of a very basic modern take on a Lego classic space, very basic little rover vehicle, you know, very simple, does use one fairly new piece to create just a little different shape on the front there, but you could turn this around and you know, use it as a sensor and has just a single sticker on the back, but this just folds down to make it very convenient to put it in there. Now, the cargo space is kind of designed specifically to hold that, but you can just leave these side bolsters out that kind of you know, hold on to the, the wheels and keep it from rattling around at all. And it gives you a little bit more actually usable space. I mean, having the studs available there on a pretty much flat surface, 
means that you can reconfigure this and use it in different ways. That's a good thing. And then the canopy here is the most modern shuttle canopy piece, and they've just remolded it in black and it's printed, so it has a little bit of nose print there, and, and it also has the bat logo done in gold. I thought they were going to do that in yellow, but they did it in gold. It's a little bit fancier, and the insert for the window section there is in just a regular transparent yellow, which just matches other bat stuff from the Lego like Batman movie. The cockpit seats only one person compared to the two seats that you could uh, get out of it from the the city version of the space shuttle from the most recent space exploration sub theme and that's just a sticker for the console and you get a couple of control sticks and really that's pretty much it there's nothing you can really do in terms of adjusting wing or winglet angles or anything like that except for just these little tips right here that's about it these are i guess you could bring these up but doesn't really look good once you expose those those studs under there. I don't I don't like that. So I guess you can make the change, but there's no real transformative feature here. It pretty much just gets to fly around and deploy its cargo. It doesn't even have a, a cannon arm to you know to move stuff around with. But it it does look good. And I think the size is right. Uh, I don't think it needed to be any bigger than this for what it's trying to do as a playset. The platform that's left behind doesn't really do that much. I feel like they probably put more into this than they needed to for what it's supposed to do. And I think it does less than they wanted it to for how much they put into it. What I mean by that is you have features that aren't really that useful. For instance, the the, the little uh, track for the, the different outfits is able to just slide back and forth. I have this guy in, not fully, I'll show you why in just a second, but this is intended to just slide back and forth. It really doesn't do that much. It's supposed to be so that you would be picking one of the outfits, but I mean, if it's only moving that far, there's not really that much point in having it do it at all. It's not like the uh, the Batcave break-in set where they actually had the, the little carousel that you could turn around. That was a cool feature, but this seems kind of a little bit on the the useless side in terms of just being able to move it around just have a spot for each of those and maybe give us a couple extra spots and they don't have any extra spots to put more of your of your suits on here if you're collecting more so yeah it doesn't work out all that well uh, in terms of efficiency for the the use of parts now they have a whole rack of items down here you can use this as a grappling hook gun there's the hook a couple batarangs some arrows or bolts and then this is a a uh, fine looking little little selector. You know, it's a selector console for the different bat suits. And I like the stickers on there. And I also like the build. I think that build is is pretty worthy. Pretty good for what it's intended intended to be. And this is just a light up here. You can rotate that around. And you can turn these up and down. <laughs> That's just that. Got a bunch of pieces used around the base of that to make it look like it's part of terrain. Again, I feel like that's not that great of a use of a bunch of pieces there because you could just attach all of this anywhere even up here this assembly works really nicely being able to angle it all around but why are you angling it why why i think most kids won't even care about that if they just had a couple of static lights up there i think it would have worked just as well plus you also have all of these tiles that are used that i feel don't really do much could have been just a couple of plates and done the space to hold the 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 shuttle the whole shuttle system doesn't really do anything it's just there there are no connection points there's no refueling there's no play value there whatsoever and the last thing over here is a dock for the bat kayak i'll have to look up the proper name for that in just a second but this is able to rotate around why it doesn't Really need to and this thing itself is kind of just comic relief I'm kind of glad that they included this because it's funny this will not actually float the way it's designed it'll always tip over uh, you can make the kayak itself float but not with all this stuff on the back with the, the whole booster unit holds a single figure and uh, doesn't have any controls obviously this thing is going to be powered so you don't need oars or anything 
to make it go. But yeah, just a little bit of comic relief. Nice to get this piece done in that black color that probably won't be done again. But uh, again, a lot of this, a lot of this build doesn't do much for me. I do very much like the suits though. We'll take a closer look at those in just a second. The reason that this center guy is not attached fully is that they didn't even give us a good amount of room for their capes. They each have capes. And this one just barely fits with its cape around the back. This one has a soft cape, so that can be kind of flowed around as needed. But the center one has just the traditional length and style and material of cape. You know, it's the more crinkly, older style. And if I try to put that in there, no matter what I do, it is going to get bent up and crinkled up. And I don't want to bend up and crinkle up this nice cape, especially with the the shiny little metallic kind of weave in it. So that doesn't work too well for me. All the more reason they could have just left this with just a few spots for these to stand. And that would have been, that would have been fine. Just let me choose one. So looking more closely at these outfits, this is the fire starter bat suit with dark red for the cowl or mask color. And the cape is again in the older style. It doesn't have any iridescence to it. Uh, for a head there. It's just a stand-in. It's just a plain white minifig head underneath. And here's a look at the print on the back of that torso. It's it's all right. It's nothing too special, but pretty much matches, I'd say, the, the graphic style that they use. Reggae Man Batsuit was actually one of my favorite things in the entire LEGO Batman movie. And they have recreated it here, including bringing in the entire new mold for that huge headpiece with the, the hair wrap that has not gone all the way around the, the locks there. We've got the bright gold printing on the front, which is, um, I think, better looking from any normal distance than it is here. Here you can see just a little bit of the, the thinness around the edges, but from any normal human distance, I think it looks great. It's very shiny. They did go with white as the secondary color, kind of the stand-in for a skin tone color for the arms that's too bad so you can't just pop this off and put a, a robin or a dick grayson head on top of this and you know see it being just appropriate and and completed they do use dual molded legs there let me get some of the stuff off the arms are also dual molded the green color is the bright green color and there's the the, uh, the print on the back of the torso. I do also want to show you what this looks like with the Dick Grayson head on top, just to complete it. So with the arms there, with the white color, it basically just makes it look like he has a long sleeve white shirt on underneath a bright green t-shirt. And then, you know, the, the red is, is over that. So, you know, it, it can work, and especially since they do have the, the white shown inside of there. So it kind of helps with establishing that story for what you're seeing. Space bat suit, I think, looks really good. The print on the legs is just a little bit off. You can see at the, the top, the top part of the print is shifted just a little bit to the left, but this works out well with the black color for the air tank and just life support unit uh, piece that's over there. And they've got the painted visor for that it has the white colored head underneath again to kind of represent a mannequin and the print on that torso is nice there's a lot of metallic silver on there it's pretty shiny this is yeah it's just good looking to me and you know it's the softer type of cape material and it has a good print on the back as well it pretty much again matches the level of detail of the front i'm glad to be able to see this i'm glad that they use this type of cape so that you can appreciate all that print that is there Here's your normal Batman figure in this set, and it is indeed quite normal. I mean, the torso is the exact same thing that they've used on all of them throughout this series, all of the, the standard Batman figures. Same print on the back of the torso as well. Got the nice style of cape, and what changes from one to the next is just the facial expression or the head that they use, which gives you two faces. So there's one, and there's the other. So not just your your most basic, most plain, most generic expressions. These are a little bit different, which is good, I think. And I think it's good to get uh, a, a less common one in a more expensive set. Kind of gives it a little more value. 
So here's the full Dick Grayson figure, and I think this looks great. Uh, it's got the skin tone around the eyes. Now that's just a little bit off, a little bit pinkish. Same thing goes for the skin tone just uh, under the, the neck on the torso, but the rest of the torso print looks really good. The hip print even looks good. The leg print prints <laughs> look good to me. And the print around the back of the torso looks really good as well. So yeah, this is definitely a good figure. Two facial expressions as options. There's one of them, good to get. There's another, and the great thing about Robin slash Dick Grayson is that you can actually use his faces in other figures, unlike with Batman, where you pretty much need to have one of those cowls over it for it to work at all. The last figure is Catwoman, and this is another good figure, I think. Very consistent with the, the print from the top of the torso down to the middle of the legs. Just really looks like it was all done together, and that also goes for the arms as well. You know, this could have gone for some print on the sides of the legs that would have made it even better still. I appreciate the paint application on the headpiece there. And it looks good around the back too. It's, it's a nice use of the bright metallic silver color and the way that they've done these with kind of the, the balaclava style for the heads, the actual minifig heads. You know, you don't see any of that secondary face on, around the back when you don't want to see it and yeah this just works out well so to me the highlights of this set and the primary value is all down here in the figures and almost figures and that's kind of a shame because it's a big set the shuttle is fine it's just not great and most of the the bulk of the build for the the boosters and the, the tank is is not as valuable it looks nice on display i can say that for sure even though the platform here doesn't connect and doesn't really do anything it does definitely contribute to kind of the, the pride i think that you get when you look at this when you look at it in person it looks like something that that you're happy to have you know that you can be proud to have and having the little display for the bat suits is nice the little rack of accessories that's all cool but i feel like all of this platform stuff could have been done with fewer pieces for sure and the, the bat kayak again it's just kind of a kind of a, a comic relief thing that they threw in there i guess it's i guess it's cool that they included it but uh, i think that uh, the set could have been made cheaper without it with, you know without that very large specialized piece there the shuttle itself is cool the rest of that assembly eh this i feel like it's just more than it needs to be to get the play value and the display value that this set really provides also that picture right there is kind of telling because it shows that the real thing had a very different design it wasn't just larger it, it was it was different it wasn't the the same the same shape and the same arrangement of wings and engines and all that Needless to say, I personally like this set less than I would like to, but that doesn't make it a bad set. Fortunately, it's priced okay. Uh, I actually expected it to be uh, a bit overpriced, but I think it's I think it's all right for the, the volume of stuff you get, the number of figures and almost figures that you get combined. I think from the perspective of someone who buys his own stuff, that's where I get a little bit of disappointment. I think that any kid receiving this as a gift will love it. Will absolutely love it. Will love every single bit of it. Will appreciate the stuff that I felt was kind of unnecessary and will make the whole set more fun for them than it was for me. Different strokes for different folks, you know, different points of view. As always, I expect many of you to have different points of view than I do, and that's a good thing. Regardless, I hope that I've shown you enough of the set to form your own opinion from your own perspective. And I hope to have a chance to talk to you again soon in my next video. Thanks for watching.